Welcome back to Sunrise City. Well, we're focusing on security. In the light of the president's visit to Chad, he is uh, having that meeting. Uh, as we continue seeking a solution, we have uh, Professor Alaba Oluyomi here with us. Uh, he's a former Customs and Border Control Officer, former Immigration and District Adjudication Officer, he's also a former U.S. Navy Officer, hence he's a security strategist. Thank you for coming on this morning. It's a pleasure. Well, Glad it's to be um, here. Uh, heartbreaking for a lot of people, and it raises a lot of concern when they see the dailies today. Uh, ascribing uh, Sheryl Burnley saying, look, we're still under siege. Perish any thought that this is yielding positive results. So clearly giving us some headache. But you may have been observing this from a distance. What's your assessment of what you've seen, how we've approached this so far? Uh, well, uh, looking at uh, what's going on right now, uh, I've, I've, I've been uh, following uh, this urgency for the last at least about five, six years. I believe it started, actually, it became very violent in 2009. Uh, we are almost 10 years, almost, up, 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 almost 10 years now into this insurgency, this rebellion. Uh, uh, make no mistake, this is going to remain for a long time to come. Uh, okay. I, do not, I do not believe when you have insurgency take hold like this, as in the case of Boko Haram, it doesn't just go away. It's going to, you, you can subdue Boko Haram. But believe me, Boko Haram will be here. We better accept it and try to re-strategize as a country. Uh, Boko Haram is going to be here for some time to come. Uh, and I'll tell you the reason why. You know, um, this terrorist organization, as far as I'm concerned, is about the worst, the worst type of terrorist organization ever in modern history. This is a terrorist organization that does not discriminate. It does not differentiate between a mosque and a church, between a child and, and the elderly, between a Muslim civilian and a pastor. Everybody is a target. What's the ISIS? Well, ISIS, ISIS, well, uh, let's go back. You know, uh, Manawi kind of broke away from uh, Shekau. And he's the leader now of uh, ISIS for West Africa. They don't just target everybody. You know, they try to. In fact, that's the reason why uh, Shekau was removed as a leader. He was going to be, made, he was going to be uh, the leader of uh, ISIS in West Africa. But he was removed because of his dis disobedience of, uh, of the global leader of ISIS. Now, what I'm saying is, uh, I mean, my opinion is, the way things are going, especially for this election season, uh, we, this is a wake-up call, and Nigerians have to be on their toes. This is the time terrorist organizations really, they like to strike. But, you know, if you say, especially during these elections, if you look, take a look back, uh, the last elections, we had this kind of challenge as well. They were running riots in yeah. the northeastern part of the country. But come the elections, elections went peacefully. They had very high turnout as a result. I mean, if we rely on the results that we've seen. So can you then say that it's going to affect the elections? Now, perhaps, to what extent do you think that will affect it? It will, because the intention of a terrorist organization like Boko Haram is to destruct. And that's actually, in fact, this season is the time they try to, to establish their rebellious uh, uh, actions and to make to to show that they are, they are still very much around and active, you know? So I, the way things are going, I see Boko Haram striking between now and election day in a big way. It's, it's not too far from um, what, you, what the president said when he was in charge, that um, he has already alerted that Boko Haram are employing drones to carry out their nefarious acts against Nigeria and, of course, other uh, countries in the basin. But what must be done, in your view, being a security expert, that will help the, the security formation, especially the MJTF, for instance, to try to contain the activities of Boko Haram even before the elections in Nigeria and even beyond? Yeah, what we need to do, or what the security forces can do, is to learn from those countries that have far more experience in counter-terrorism. Uh, we need to encourage more research 
in terrorism. We need to, have, we need to promote the scholarship of discovery in the area of terrorism and security as well. We need to benchmark the performance of the Nigerian army right now with external parameters, with ex external metrics. You cannot self-assess yourself. This is a new experience for Nigeria. So where do we begin from? For instance, yesterday we had a guest on the show in our Abuja studios who said that we are depleted in our strengths for the army and that uh, we had a shortfall maybe um, uh, there are about uh, 50, maybe even up to 200. But what, what, what will be the first steps if we must take the right things and put in perspective that this war is not only about Nigeria? What must be the first things? These, I mean, uh, heads of states that have met in Chad, what would you be saying to them? Well, if I were to advise them, my opinion is when it comes to terrorism, we have to share intelligence more rapidly. Uh, as in the case of Boko Haram, there has to be a joint, I, I know that is already in place, but it has to be, uh, it has to be uh, fine-tuned, you know, like the regional forces, mm. like in Chad, Niger, uh, Northern Cameroon, there has to be a mechanism by which the regional military forces share intelligence in a more cohesive way. Two, we have to train and equip our soldiers. I mean, it will be cynical and totally inexplicable to say they are not doing a good job. We, are, we give them the credit. Uh, some people will say they are not, you know, they are the security solution, uh, everything about Boko Haram has failed with this administration, but I, I completely disagree with that. Uh, we have to do more when it comes to training our soldiers and actually getting them ready for the next step, the next phase in this fight. Well, I, you've said you, you've been studying this for the past five to six years. Yes, yes, the, the insurgency. Insurgency situation. Um, and that means you've also been looking at the response mechanism of the security operatives, yes. the country generally. Um, now you've talked about for us to move beyond this point, there has to be rapid sharing of intelligence. But let's, can we just step back a bit and, and analyze what has been in the past five, six years? What have you seen that wasn't properly in place that needs to be tweaked? Uh, with regards to, what, with regards to this administration, uh, I believe- Even beyond this administration. Even beyond this, what we need to do, really do. Uh, well, um, first, Security is the business of everybody. There has to be more awareness, not just in the Northeast. Nigerians have to know that, look, security is everybody. If you see something, say something. Yeah. There are active cells. There is hierarchy within Boko Haram. But guess what? They, are, they, are, they, 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 they operate in cells of between 100 and 500. I mean, they, 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 and they are all well, they are scattered around the northeast area, probably to Chad. Well, there has to be awareness. We have to create more awareness. Then I feel and I believe if we do more in the area of training and equipping our soldiers to fight this terrorism, uh, we might be able to subdue. But another thing is we must realize also that, look, this insurgency is not going away. When insurgency takes hold, it does not go away. Even the United States realized after declaring victory that look, we've, we've won. We, it, will, it will disintegrate. If you subdue terrorism, it, there's a way it's it, it, it rebrand into another organization. Look, ISIS, ISIS uh, it was Al Qaeda, right, in Iraq that became ISIS, right? Despite the fact that the US was able to subdue and actually crush them, they became another organization under another leader. The same thing we will quarrel. This is not, this is a ruthless, this is the most, in fact, Bukwaram has committed so much heinous crime, despicable acts of brutality and primitivity and crudity. 